Don't try to sneak into your room like that. I know what you've got behind your back. Records. More no records. So now, tell me about this turntable and what's your, what's your involvement with it. What's my problem? <laughs> and you are? Uh, I'm Rick Stutt. Uh, I'm the founder of the Takumi turntable. Um, a few years ago we introduced our first model, the 2.1. Um, we were very happy with that and then we um, made a decision to upgrade to a better turntable, to a more nice sound and also a little bit more classic look. Because we noticed that many people uh, like the old look of a turntable. And then what we did do is we, uh, we did go back to the old days where it was normal to have your tone arm lift on the corner of the record deck. Oh, yeah. That's so nice. if, if you look around, nobody is doing it. And it's so funny because in the past it was normal. Um, so you have here your 0, 33, 45, and you have your arm up and down. And it's, it's very handy over here. It is. Now, yeah. now the, the name is very, very Japanese sounding. Is that it on is. purpose? It is, yeah. That is, that, that, that just, uh, is it just developed. It developed. You sound like you're from the Netherlands? <laughs> I'm from the Netherlands, yeah, yes. A, otherwise, uh, it turned here, it's a Takumi. <laughs> 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 it's a Takumi, yeah. And that well, was on purpose. It's a, it's a, the, the meaning of the, of, of, uh, of the word Takumi uh, is a person who masters a skill so very well that he is able to bring it over to other people. And that is in fact what the record player is doing. So tell me about tell me about the, the design uh, of this turntable. What, what was your um, aside from the convenience features? Yeah. What's going well, on? Uh, here? The, the main thing is that you control uh, waves in the record deck. So uh, everything in here is making vibrations. Even the stylus in the record gives a, a opposite force. That's the same eh? in the opposite, opposite direction. Uh, so you need to get rid of these waves traveling around uh, a motor. How good it is will always make some vibrations and these waves are traveling in a different path from here to the toner, from here to the, to the bearing, through the belt, it's a belt drive. Um, so it's very important that you control all these waves. Of course. And this, this is a DC, DC motor, AC motor? This is, this is DC motor. DC motor. Yeah, this is a, a new option now. We have a whole sensor inside, so we also control the spinning of the right. motor. And what's that platter made out of? Palm? Sorry? The platter is made out of palm? Yes, there's a, there's a Delrin. It's, it's a palm C, yes. Delrin, okay. Yeah. Same and, thing, uh, different. We have, uh, we have a subplatter uh, under here. That's oh, uh, nice. Aluminium. Glad you took that up to show it. That's a very nice subplatter. Yeah, and this is the, the, the motor, of course. And yeah. you forgot, you left the belt home. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, we did. I'm sorry. Yeah. We have, a, we have another record deck playing in the, in the booth. And it's a very nice yeah. arm and you, you build that? Yes, we, we build it ourselves and it's very, very basic. It's just a fully, uh, uh, fully cardenic, so you, you can see. Yep. It has a very low friction and it has a, a disc in here with six magnets. So with, with, the, with the magnet here you can control the, the way Anti skating, yep. Okay. Yeah, and it's working very nice. Uh, it's a titanium toner, so it's very light. What is it? Uh, titanium. Titanium, okay. Yeah, titanium. Very <coughs> light and stiff, and uh, so it, it can handle a lot of uh, cartridges. And what is the what are you, what are the footers? What is it sitting on? Some sort of. Uh uh, you here? No, the, the footers that it does. Ah, okay, it's, uh, the, the, the footers are uh, hang in, uh, in a kind of rubber part, so it can really, it can really move okay. a little bit. And also the top here, I'm allergic to something. Here, right here. <laughs> <laughs> the top layer is uh, acrylic, and it's uh, to uh, all around decoupled from the wooden part, and okay. then we have acrylic again. Now, what does this co <coughs> cost? Before I choke myself uh, to death. This record player is uh, two thousand four hundred ninety-five euros. Oh, that's that's very good. I, I, well, we, we try to make it a little bit affordable, but yeah. I'm sure that the, what we found in all the tests we did is playing above the, the, the price level it has. It's very nice. It's uh, really very much on timing. Really on timing. And do you have an American importer yet? No, not yet. Well, I'll do it. I'll change jobs. No, I can't do that. <laughs> no, well, I hope you get one. This is like a very nicely designed turntable, yeah. yeah. and the price seems really reasonable for yeah. what you're offering. And you're the wood, offering. by the way, is solid wood. It's, it's beech or walnut. It's okay. really a solid uh, CNC part. And what's what's the bearing? Is it is it a, it's a just a, a steel ball uh, or a the, the brass bearing is, uh, is, uh, is bronze with a, a ceramic. Ceramic. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, you, so basically, you put together a really nice, nicely designed turntable, and the execution looks really nice, and the price looks really nice. Yeah. So, what's there not to like? Uh, Nothing. Uh, no, no. I think it's a perfect record deck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's very nice. I like it. Yeah. Hopefully, someone will pick up on it and uh, see this video in America and say, "I'll, yeah. I'll destroy it." I hope so. We are ready for it. Yeah. Yeah. Because the price is is right. It looks very nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm glad I ran into you and and got this video and yeah. associate a name with a face. Thank you very much. And thank you. Yep. Thank you. Gravity is not your problem, it's always the same, it never changes. Your real problem is that your arm is being tugged, plucked forwards endlessly by the signal. Yes. Uh, and if you have a, a flat surface, which is what the pivot point really sees, then the arm is constantly being yanked like this. It might work well for the first 10 or 20 records, but at some point you've got an arm that actually has play. It climbs up the bearing or climbs down, but it's not it's isolating. Moving. It's, it's always moving. moving. the yeah. time axis, yeah. which is your worst nightmare. It's like jitter. You know, it's exactly the Absolutely. thing you don't want. And not, so, not, to mention, not to mention azimuth. It's exactly. There's all kinds of problems. So the, the solution with that, because unit pivots are actually really good, but not if you point them in the wrong direction. So what you do is you point your unit pivot away from the cartridge. So now, as the cartridge keeps yanking the arm this way, in fact, it makes no progress in the direction of the time axis because the pivot point perfectly opposes the yanking on the arm from the cartridge. And so you get a much better opposition to the time axis vibrations that the, the arm will Now, there still is gravity pulling, wanting to pull the arm yes. down. The so question is, how do you stop the arm dropping off your sideways unit pivot? Yes. And the answer is that you, you can suspend the arm from a point exactly above the pivot so that when the arm does this against the pivot it's not obstructed by the suspension at all and you can see this here you can see that there are two suspenders uh, something like somewhat like a well-tempered arm but they come from a single point and the single point is directly above the uni pivot and so that means that when you move the arm sideways you have no opposition from the suspension and the uni pivot point itself perfectly opposes the pull in this direction it is absolutely frictionless in the your axis the sideways movement and more importantly the, the pivot is on the line between the two points at the bottom of the hoists so that there's also no opposition to the upwards and downwards movement so you have one point fixed in the universe and the arm free to move in the ways that it should be but not free to move in the way that it mustn't and the most important thing when people hear the word uni pivot they think oh no not a uni pivot those wobbly things yeah, yeah. i can't set them up right. i can't cue them right. and i don't believe they're giving me the base performance that i want yes and one of the reasons for that is that uni pivots roll right this arm does not roll and the reason why it doesn't roll is because it has a suspension point and a pivot point 
which form a vertical axis so that those two fixed points cannot roll. And I can demonstrate this to you. When I insist. I, when, the, when the bearing is engaged like when the bearing is engaged like this, if you tap on the side of the arm, you see absolutely no roll, no vibrational response at all. It's, the arm is absolutely f so it behaves like and handles just like a gimbal arm, even though it's a uni pivot, and it does that without extra mass and without damping. Yeah, it looks like two points are touching that plate. No, only one point is touching. And the other, what's the other point do? There, I mean, there are two points back there, right? Yeah, so are you talking about this point here? Yes. So that point is the point where the uh, suspenders of the arm uh, come out, and it doesn't make contact with oh, the Oh, I see, I see. There's, there's an opening there. Yeah, I didn't see yeah, that. Yeah, there's a, there's a hole in the front of the... Uh, yeah, got it. I surface. couldn't see that from where I was. So there's no hard contact between the suspension yeah. point and the pivot point. Yeah. And so that way, you only have one hard contact, therefore you have no chatter, no play, and the hard point contact is oriented perfectly to fight the pull of the yeah. cartridge. And, and what is that arm made out of? The arm tube itself is made from uh, pultruded carbon fiber. Okay. Uh, it has a damping in one side and uh, not damped in the other side. It has a reinforcement at the head shell. The rear of, it, of the arm, the thrust box, is this part here, which I call a thrust box because it's a box shape and it does the thrusting. Okay. Of the well, that makes sense. Uh, uh, that is made from steel. Uh, and so this, uh, this bearing is very, very simple. Uh, I set out to design an arm that required no precision manufacturing, primarily because I had no access to precision manufacturing. <laughs> I had, uh, yeah. Would it help? Would it help to have precision manufacturing? Uh, I, I don't think so, no, because, because the principle of the bearing actually doesn't really require any. The only point of precision in the whole arm is that you have a sharpened point, yes. which is the bearing point. What is your point of sharpness? It sharpens the sharpness of it. Steel? Uh, is it steel? Oh, the, the pivot point itself, uh, initially they were tungsten, now they are high-speed steel. So they've got softer, but the reason they've got softer is a technical reason to do with magnetism. Okay. So, uh, in fact, the bearing uh, performance is enhanced if you can magnetize the pivot point just a little bit, and a, a little bit of magnetic attraction at the pivot point just no, no chat, no keep, chatter. Keep the bearing. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it has no chatter anyway. Yeah. But the reason, um, the, re the reason that it needs to have a little bit of magnetism is the ideal behavior of the bearing happens when the two hoists are in a vertical plane exactly, and then you get the best spherical uh, geometry. Uh, and so to have them exactly vertical, your contact pressure at the bearing would be precisely zero. Uh, and obviously, it's difficult to set up uh, a, a hanging bearing with precisely zero pressure. Yeah. So the easiest thing is you put a magnet on, and that gives you a little bit more pressure, and so you have some leeway yeah, yeah. at the bearing uh, that gives it enough pressure that you don't need to worry so about. So is your that. plan to, to uh, manufacture and, and sell this, or, you, or is your plan to it's license already the available. technology? We've sold, we've sold over 60 tone arms now. Uh, they are very well received. We've had a couple of reviews which have gone extremely well. Uh, you know, people saying extraordinary things about uh, their experience. Hi Fi I, AF said, a shocking, staggering, life affirming experience. Which Who is, said that? Which Anybody is the I kind of know? understatement that I expect from someone like you, Michael. You'll never <laughs> and, get a statement like that from me. <laughs> and uh, Hi, -Fi, Hi Fi AF said that. It's a very nice, very interesting review, very well yeah. written. Um, and, uh, Did he wear yeah, rubber but, underwear when he wrote that? I mean, it's like, <laughs> oh my God, I couldn't control myself. He always, he always wears rubber, rubber underwear. But, uh, <laughs> we've got a lot of great customer feedback as well, and really looking forward to reviews from uh, from uh, other, other. Well, I'd, uh, I'd love to give you a review. Well, I would love to give you an arm. That would be great. You know, okay. you, you're the man that. Uh, can you send uh, it? Yeah, absolutely. We will send you an arm, definitely. And okay. uh, you can you tell us what mount you want, what length you want. You can order the arm to any length. You give us either your spindle. Can you do a 12, you, 12 inch arm? Exactly. I can do 12 inch. I can do it to the millimeter. I can do Bearwell or Stevenson with any geometry. Oh, that's right. That's right. There's no. It, is there? There's no head shell slot. Is that, so you move the arm has to slide. So it's the rear of the arm that has to slide to set your pivot to spindle distance. Uh, Correct. No. What we do is we cut the arm to the length that you order. Right. Um, but because the arm is symmetrical all the way along, you right. can just cut it to any length. So that means that we can, you know, fill it, any order. For where the stylus is going to sit relative to, relative to the where you screw it into the arm is, is there, it's different. That's why there are slots and arms. So, yeah, so we put this. We have.
have about a four millimeter slot oh. in the head shell area. That's so the one you have. So you have a bit of movement there. Oh, there it is. Oh, see, yeah. this is this is a really lousy angle I've got here. I see nothing from this angle. I see you, come and around, you're not much around, to look at. Come but around this <laughs> come around this side. Uh, so if we shoot from over there, yeah, okay, then you get see? a better angle. And you, where you want to look in is you want to look in at the bearing from this side. Yeah, well, I see now that I see the slots. I didn't see the slots yeah. before. Yeah, so we have slots. Um, yeah, you were standing on the wrong side. You're the, you should know better. Okay, sorry. Normally I, I demonstrate the arm from that side because it's easier to stretch over. Okay, but, uh, now I now I. Yeah, so from that side you can see the bearing, and the, the important thing is that when the bearing is disengaged, you can see there's no contact. As soon as you let the arm hang by gravity and the cartridge begins to pull it, you have an engagement of the side base yes. point, and that is the only hard point of contact between the arm and the wall. <coughs> and what is uh, what is that hanging, is that a thread or a...? Yeah, I use a, I use a braid, it's commercially available, it's very, very strong, it's very inelastic, it's totally waterproof, it won't degrade. Well, who's using it underwater? I mean, or in a rainforest. So fishing braids are very, very, uh, they're designed for... And, really and what is it, what do you sell this arm for? The 9-inch arm is 2,100 GB pounds. The any longer legs, so 10, 11, 12, whatever you want, the world's your oyster, yeah. those are 2,400 GB pounds. Great, and if, and if you have a slot a slot mount kind of like this, you could actually adjust anything anyway. Yeah, it's, it's very adjustable. And you can adjust, there's a VTA adjustability there? You're... Yeah, the VTA is a simple, so people who like to fiddle with a VTA are probably not gonna like it. It's a simple bolt, yeah. it locks the pillar in. Right. Um, my personal opinion is that um, probably the easiest way to deal with VTA is to have three thicknesses of mat that you change onto. That's your, another way of doing uh, it, yeah. Which seems to me to be a reasonable yeah. way. I Assuming didn't... you're trying to go up. I mean, if you're trying to go down, you got to remove mats. But... Well, okay, we're on the you, same you page. You can here. adjust the VTA of your arm to match yeah. the thicknesses and of I mat. don't adjust for every record I own. I don't do that. That's, yeah, I mean, that's, 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 mad, that's, that way madness that's, lies. That is madness, no. You, no. you know, you can, get, you can get too obsessive about it. I'm in this to play records. Yeah, it's yeah. the music, not yeah, the music. Have fun. Let's have fun. Once we and what, the technical stuff. Let's play what range games. cartridge can you put, put on this? You can put any cartridge on this, and the reason is that I deliberately designed the arm to be very low inertia, so that you can. It's, it's very compatible with very high compliance. And the cartridges that I wanted to use, I used a Shaw M97 with no brush attached, right? So that it works beautifully. Now, how do you adjust the, ca the counterweight? The, the, how do you adjust tracking force? Uh, you adjust the tracking force uh, by let me just show you by this. putting pennies on the front of the head shell or nickels. Or Brexit money. You adjust the tracking force, and very simply, uh, it comes with three sizes of weight to cope with the widest range of cartridge weights and arm lengths. And when the arm is installed, to adjust the tracking weight, you push the weight forwards, and you pull it backwards. <laughs> is that magnetic, or is that? It's magnetic. It slides forwards easily. It stays exactly where it is. There's enough friction that it never moves. Once and that magnetism it. has no effect on on your cartridge it, or it's it's um, as far it's, away. strips of magnetic. Uh, stuff that, that stick it on have um, channels of, of north and south all the way down them. So the net magnetism from this magnet is not significant. Okay, in so any you've end. thought about all these things, which is which is good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have thought about it. All right. No, I think this would be this would be really good good so, to review. And so the and the wires coming back to the inertia yeah. uh, point, which is really important. The arm is low inertia for high compliance cartridges, but it comes with two kinds of inertia adapter so that you can adjust the inertia right up to very, very heavy uh, inertia. And um, uh, a reviewer in Canada, uh, hifiaf.com, has attached uh, half a kilogram of mass to his arm in testing a Miyajima cartridge and said it performed beautifully. And the reason that you can do that on this arm is because the mass of the arm is all taken up by the hoists that are suspended. Yeah. They are, they, they're rated to 20 pounds each. So that means that you really can put a lot of mass on it without any worry. Yes. None of that mass is being borne by the bearing itself. The bearing being sideways is right. only dealing with the, with the uh, uh, impulses from the cartridge. Right. And so you can put a half a kilogram or a kilogram of mass on the arm and the bearing will still perform beautifully. So you can take it up to very, very low compliance cartridges. In hanging half a kilogram of mass on the arm, he was testing a Miyajima monocarb cartridge yeah. and doing infinity things, or, and he said that it performed beautifully even with half a kilogram. And, and you thought of this uh, after a night of heavy drinking or what was it? <laughs> Pretty much. i tell you what happened. I, I found a couple of old turntables being thrown out uh, near where I live and I didn't know what they were but I, I, I rescued them so I thought they look interesting and I loaded them online and said oh, look what I found and people said wow you've just found a pair of Garand 301s. You That's did? 
this day. And so they sat you around. Really, you really found it? This is one of them. Oh, yeah. oh my Jesus. God. Jesus. <laughs> Who throws for something? This could have ended up in a trash heap. This could have ended up in a dump. It dog. used to belong to uh, Paul Channon, Margaret Thatcher's transport minister. Uh, and uh, it was in the house that his son sold to um, a very, very well known uh, Russian. Oh, famous Russian. I'm not going to say any more than that. Don't, no, don't say more because and, this can uh, be a uh, problem uh, for you. Uh, and I can't find out who this is. And, and very and very kindly, uh, uh, they said. Yeah. It is not Medvedev because Medvedev is a vinyl. Is a vinyl. Medvedev has a very good accurate turntable. I know of. Um, He's a heavy metal freak. Medvedev. Anyway, I had these two garards lying around. I wasn't too happy with the old SME arms on them. They're from 1963. They've never been modified in any way except having an oil What did you do? You didn't throw those in the trash, you the SME arm. You didn't throw those away. The I still got them in a box somewhere. Good, because you can sell those for probably... Uh, I'll send them to you with the... Uh, I don't want to. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> that much of a vintage so, guy. So, um, so, so anyway, those two turntables needed an arm, and when lockdown came, I thought, now's my chance. They've been sitting around for 10 years. Now's my chance. And the arms that I'm interested in, you know, the kind of thing that I see on uh, Michael Freema reviews, yeah. uh, a little bit beyond my budget. Pricey. And I thought, yeah. you know what? Damn it. I'm just going to actually go ahead and make a tone arm, see what I can do. And I'm going to try to make the best tone arm that I have ever listened to. And that was my goal, but it was a bit tongue in cheek because I knew I had very limited tools, and yeah. that's why I had to decide to make a tone on bearing that could be manufactured with very little access to yeah. precision. And so, look what you came up with. This looks really, really cool. That's what I came up. Can with. you get it in different colors, or is that a you can have it in any? Well, currently, you can have it in any Cerakote uh, uh, oh. color, so Cerakote C type color. Yeah. So if you want it in orange or green or blue, there's about 12 different types of gray and silver that you can have. Obviously, there's See, I just think that I think just like that, it looks really cool. Yeah. It's very cool. It is. So we've got a turntable playing. Uh, in I don't. The, I don't listen to music. I just. I, I, it's not a problem. It's a gunmetal. I hate music. Super track arm in there, and it's been uh, very popular. It's doing really well. In the Moon River. In the Moon River. In the Moon River room. Yeah. So it's playing through a Moon River uh, phono stage and amplifier, and it's. A modest, very modest. I'll take table, a quick look. Very modest cartridge, but it's sounding very nice. Would, would you say he's loquacious like this all the time? He is. Well, that's good. You're doing your, you're doing your job, man. You're doing your job. He's, no he's, one would accuse you of being prolix. No. <laughs> I'm enjoying this. I can just lay back and listen. It doesn't happen that often. Oh, that would be great. Okay. We need to do that over a beer. Yeah. So that we can really do yeah. it. No, this is, this is great. I'm glad. The, the, it's the guy from... Uh, uh, t t Takumi, whatever is that? Yeah, Takumi, the, yeah. the Dutch guy with the Japanese Rick, name. Yeah. Yeah. Rick. Rick, I think. From the Netherlands. <laughs> Takumi, we are uh, turntable from uh, Japan. No, it's made in the Netherlands. But he, no, he, he told me to come over here to see you, and I'm glad he did because this I would have missed this otherwise. Yeah, well, you know, we would have loved to have uh, spoken to you long ago, but, you know. You were we shy. You were shy. We don't have connections. <laughs> we don't have the. You know, we, we're a startup. We're not heard of. It's difficult to get through to people. But so that's we, what I like. You know, for my website, that's what I like. This is exactly what I like. Fantastic at promoting a lot of people doing interesting things. Yeah. I really respect it. It's fantastic. So I have a new website. You know, you know, I've, I've left. I know, I know. You've been yeah. quite, yeah. Don't worry, we're all following you wherever you go. We're I, I, you. I worry, so I appreciate that. You know, life we're is good now. You. It's really great now. So great. Well, and I just want to say thank you for what you've done because I'm a vinyl guy. I never switched to CD. I love my records. I don't have very many. My collection isn't particularly interesting or great but I still love my records because I've picked one out and I say I remember I bought this in our price records on the King's exactly. Road when I was 16 years exactly. old and I was with that girlfriend that I loved and it broke my heart yeah. whatever it was. of course of course but, but now the record is, means nothing to me yeah. but, but you know the, the fact is that you know we have this personal connection yeah. with our vinyl that, yes. that, and you've done a lot to help you know, made to keep that alive and the dream of final is yeah. still very it's, it's unbelievable really alive yeah. and kicking and you've done a lot to help well thank you and after you play the record uh, you don't go online and they all of a sudden know what you played and put all kinds of stuff up about what you just did it's so creepy when they do that yeah. you know? yeah. Okay, great. I'm going to go over there and listen. Thanks so much. You, 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 you gave me your card. Do you have a card? I'll give you a card. Here you go. I don't want the shocking, staggering. Is this, oh, this is your card. Do the manual, Rich. The manual's Okay, yeah, actually, yeah. fantastic. Yeah, Michael, here, have a, have a manual because yeah. um, if you're really bored one day and you want to really grasp how the arm works. Sure. Just, uh, put, okay, I'll, I'll, when I stop the video. Just a brief interruption, esteemed viewers. As you may know, I'm Tom Martin, Chief Content Officer of The Absolute Sound. We have a new product, it's on the Substack platform, 
and we're going to do some interesting things with Substack. First of which is reader questions and answers. Each Monday, readers will submit questions, we'll pick the most interesting ones, and we'll answer the questions on Friday. We'll also have early access to articles and special blogs that don't appear anywhere else. We hope you'll join us. It's only a cost of a cup of coffee per month. Just check on the screen or in the show notes below. Thanks, and now back to the show. All right, so this is a 30-year-old Technics. We've got a Technics Mark V. You know, it's the, it's the trusty old DJ deck. Right. It spins records at a reasonably good speed, as we all know. And you took uh, the... Uh, we've put a Blackbird uh, tone arm on there, and we've got a, a very nice but modestly priced Audio-Technica AT33SA. That's the Shibata AT33. Yep. Yep. Uh, it's about a 700-euro cartridge, I think. Yep. Uh, and so, yeah, so we'll, we'll play that, and we're here. You know, the, the arm... Uh, bring something to the table on modest decks or expensive decks it doesn't care what deck you know you'll get a lot out of your deck if you put uh, a really and, really and do some number. people object to this this uh queuing arm being up like that do they think yeah it? the arm comes with a, a normal uh rigid oh, lifter okay. as well uh, i mean i personally prefer using this string i find it a very comfortable queuing position at the yeah. end of the record i don't have to start doing this kind of uh, right. fair, you yeah. know, kung fu stuff uh, i can just hold it very I'm, glad, I'm glad we mentioned that so people who don't want that can know it's got a Stand, yeah, that's right. It's, so, the, so the arm comes with both types of uh, finger lifter. Okay, that's let's it. hear it. Yeah, let's hear it. Okay, every year we make a trek to this room where one of the large distributors distributes a lot of different brands. And so we'll just run through here because it's kind of interesting and you see a lot of stuff. So this is a new D'Agostino integrated. And, and these are Meridian speakers. And there's a VPI inexpensive turntable, a Scout. And they have Velodyne subwoofers. We're just going to make a quick reconnoiter. And they've got uh, Wilson. I think these are DAWs. I get confused. Sasha DAW. Yeah, Sasha DAW. Yeah. Nice speaker. And another VPI. A Loki subwoofer, DCS, and they've got a pair of Alex V's, which really sounded good in the Naga room yesterday, and in the CH Persist room, sounded good in both rooms. And there's a Strom tank, and there's a VTO. S4, that looks like a, well, okay. It's a VTL stereo amplifier. And what else we got? So they got the, they got the XVXs here. And people are, are entranced. I think this is big enough. That's a monoblock. You need two of those for stereo. This is the new uh, Technics SL1500C in white. Without the mat, but it's kind of cool looking. I think we're going to get one to review with one of their integrated amplifiers as a reasonably priced system. Uh, this is the DeBear turntable. We've seen it at the show year after year. They've got an exquisite, looks like an ST cartridge in there. And they're finally being imported to America. This is a really beautiful looking turntable. If it sounds as good as it looks, it will be excellent. And Solution, it now has a optical cartridge input. Look how easy it is to set pivot to stylus distance or pivot to spindle distance on this arm. So what do we got here? Yeah, we got our new uh, 12.0, 12, 
uh, inch tone arm. It's the more affordable model, entry model, 12 inch tone arm. We so far had the 12.1, which was uh, around six and a half thousand US. This one is four and a half thousand US. Oh, now how do you how do you lower the price? What did you do to lower the price? <laughs> We, uh, this is actually a unipivot uh, oh. uh, tone arm, and uh, this is the, the, the longer version of our 10.0, which used to be our entry model tone arm for owners of a bardo or somebody um, who one has a to two, uh, uh, two tone arm base set up, wants to add another great tone arm. This is the more affordable option. Oh, okay. But it's, it's, a, it's a pure unipivot. So you can rotate it around the... No, there are actually also bearings on the side to avoid, uh, avoid okay, so that, so it's a special it's, system. So it's stable, with, stabilized, yes, it's stabilized on that axis. Mm -hmm. Don't hold back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how does it sound? Any good? Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> the feedback so far was, 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 was really great. Good. I think there was something missing in our, in our line. Yeah. If you can bring the price down $2,000, that, you added something to the line for sure. All right. Um, and you've got a new electronics here? So we, I mean, full, show a full Brinkmann system. We're showing first time our Mark II version of our stereo amp. Uh, we launched it in 2020 already, um, but we couldn't show it here in Munich uh, until now. So that's the first time we show it in, in public. It's the improved version, especially on the power supply side, some safety features um, of our original stereo amp. That's 9,990 US. Now, just out of curiosity, have you ever found any resistance from dealers that carry your turntable and don't want to carry electronics or interferes with other brands that they sell? Does that ever come up or no? Well, we have some dealers that, 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 that only uh, uh, carry our, our turntables, yeah. especially in the US. We are yeah. well known for turntables, although Helmut Brinkmann has done electronics from the very of beginning. Course. Yep. And but then, as as soon as we uh, let them uh, have a listen on our phono stage, which is like the natural oh, uh, path into electronics, uh, yeah, they they start uh, getting into that. So it's not really a, a, an issue for us. Yeah. Okay. All right, that does it. I'm not going to have time to actually listen because I have to. The show's almost over, and I got to keep moving. And no problem. Okay. Thanks Thank for you. Coming. Okay. Thanks. What's new? It's, it's only the finish for, for, for the Moby. We decided to make one with a, um, a sh shiny metal parts. Um, and the aluminum metal parts is, uh, is uh, aircraft grade aluminum, 70, 75. That was very nice. Yeah. Um, and again, you can see the shiny parts, but it's uh, stainless steel. So that means, for example, the platter has went from uh, the, uh, 12 kilo on the classic Galder to 36 kilos oh. in uh, stainless steel. Uh, what, what is this called? This is the called. It, it's called a uh, Galder signature. Gal right, Galder. And, yeah. And uh, what does this cost? Um, it's uh, the suggested retail uh, in, in Europe is uh, 38,500. Well, okay. Including the tone arm and, uh, and right. uh, air supply, and okay. also the tone arm is uh, have uh, had some uh, changes, which makes it uh, stiffer and uh, easier to uh, to adjust it. Yeah, it looks really looks nice. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So as you can see, different parts is uh, shiny compared yeah. to to uh, to the uh, the classic one. You, you didn't know, did you always have a metal platter for this one? Yeah. You did always. Yeah. But I look aluminum. Yeah. And for this one, the stainless steel. Stainless steel. Yeah. Much more costly. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. definitely it is. Yeah. It is, yeah. And sound wise, uh, definitely also a step up. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you, man. I gotta keep rolling. Yeah, okay. Thank you, too.